When you got a sunny day in Saskatchewan, there's nothing better than the great outdoors. I'm a blind person that likes to get out. I don't get stopped very easily. I do what I can to work my way around the blindness. I can participate just like anyone else. Whether it's fishing, canoeing, cross-country skiing, backpacking, all year round, I love it all. My name is Ron Walsh. Welcome to Blind Adventures. Get ready. We're gonna do some paddling. Got my friend Stanley out here, and he's getting some lessons on how to run rapids. It's the uh, North and South Saskatchewan rivers meet. It's then it becomes the Saskatchewan River. This is pretty exciting. Stan is blind and pushing 70 years old. Running rapids is one of the biggest challenges he's ever faced. My name is Stanley Windles, and I was actually uh, raised four and a half miles from the Wingard Ferry which is, of course, on this river. And I really haven't had that much experience canoeing. Uh, you can probably count the number of times on one hand, but uh, yeah, I enjoy being outdoors and, uh, and it's good exercise. So what we're gonna practice here are some running draws and some crossbow draws. My name's John McLean. My job here today uh, is a f involves a few things. Um, the most important is safety, so I'm kind of Looking over the other two boats with the blind paddlers in them and uh, paddling solo like I am, uh, it's very easy for me to scoot around between the, the different boats and uh, if there's any problems, uh, I've taken some courses on, on whitewater rescue and paddling in moving water and rapids and also some first aid courses. But the main thing you learn when you take those courses is how to prevent problems from arising and so that's that's kind of what I'm here for, is make sure everybody has a good time. And then, as a bonus, I get to come along a trip, uh, enjoy the beautiful weather and, uh, and the good company. You just hold that tilt, and uh, the boat will spin right around. And uh, that's all we need to do. So, Kendra, you're lined up. Yep. Let's do it. Okay, so let's do, let's it. do a couple of power strokes. You want to be on your left side to start with. My name's Kendra Warman, and I live in South Patoon. Stanley, I can tell, is a very good listener. <laughs> and, uh, and he's um, really trying to learn those strokes in a really short period of time. So I think he's doing a great job picking those up. OK, you ready? Yeah. All right, cross bow draw. I feel totally comfortable um, going down the river with Stanley today. In fact, I might take a nap at some point. He won't even know. He'll just keep paddling. I certainly have felt a little scared up until now, uh, but uh, I'm feeling better about it as we go. Hopefully I'll be able to, first of all, hear Kendra from the back. That'll be the one challenge, I'm sure, in the rapids, because of course uh, anything that blocks out our hearing blocks out our sight, really. Well, Stanley, here we are on the North Saskatchewan River. We're going to be doing some rapids. What do you think? Are you excited or nervous or scared or what do you think? Well, I'm uh, excited, I'm happy, I'm happy to be in the outdoors and uh, <laughs> enjoying the heat like uh, you said you do and, and uh, the breeze, wonderful and uh, a little bit nervous but uh, not too bad. Good, good. When you go through, I want to hear some hooping and hollering hey. and a great big smile. <laughs> okay. let's, let's have fun doing this. Can you hear my smile? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to turn it up more. Hey, there you go. <laughs> It's a little ways up ahead, so you'll get a little more practice and a little more confident. And yeah, how you do just fine standing. Thank you. All right, let's go. You ready? All right. With the practice session fresh in our minds, we pushed off from the shore and traveled down the river. A local bald eagle even followed us for a bit right before we got to the rapids, where John McLean, our A1 safety man, pulled everyone over to a nearby bank to share some solid advice. So, as, uh, as I'm sure you can all hear, we got a little bit of uh, white water coming up. The main thing is we don't want to hit any rocks. We want to be on the upstream side of the boat uh, whenever possible if you've tipped. That way, uh, if the boat hits a rock, you're not going to get pinched between the rock and the, and the boat. We start off uh, the safety stuff as usual, so everybody's got helmets on. They've discussed how they're going to communicate, and then I kind of pick what I think might be a decent path that we take down the rapids. So depending on the depth of the water, the current, uh, where there's rocks or not, um, 
all those kind of things, basically the obstacles in the, in the rapid. And uh, we start down there, I kind of look over my shoulder once in a while, make sure that everything's going all right. And then they handle it themselves and it's good. The rapids kind of yield a number of feelings. One is fear. One is fascination because you, you're uh, feeling the, it's a bit like a roller coaster ride. You're, you're fascinated with what might be coming next and which way should I be moving and all this sort of thing. Uh, to counter the waves coming at you from the rapids. You're having to concentrate, you're having to think, and uh, there's also excitement because, hey, uh, you're up against, I'm up against something I've never faced before. What I was watching for was mostly rocks <laughs> and sometimes the rocks are hard to see if they're just under the surface and we definitely uh, missed one of one of those and uh, ended up going right over top of it. Kendra, come a bit closer to me. There's one big one there. I can't hear you, John. Then I yelled rock uh, behind me in the hopes that the boat coming behind me would not go over it. And it sounds like they did miss it. So that's, that's good. Doug and myself did pretty good. We managed to miss that rock Kendra found. And I'm not sure where it was, but we went by it. We did good in the rapids. We got a little wet. There was a little bit of water coming over the front and it was exciting. It, it was fun. How much water we take on, Doug? A little. A little bit. A little splash there. Yeah. 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 Action. That was cool. <laughs> I can always count on Doug Hooper to give me reliable instructions when we're on the water. All I gotta do with work with Ron is uh, we can discuss which side we're gonna be on before we get going and kind of tell a little bit about where we're gonna head. And then when you go down, you just, um, you just uh, tell them what to do. So power on the left, draw on the right, something like that. No, you don't have to paddle too hard, no? We're getting back into them right now. Then you are working together, so I get to do what I want to do, and he's doing what I tell him to do, and then we just work well. Woo. <laughs> you want to be pointed straight into the rapids and paddle hard to keep the canoe stable. It can take some careful maneuvering when you're getting blasted by waves on each side. Blind Adventures with Ron Walsh. We'll be right back. Blind Adventures with Ron Walsh. As the wind started to pick up, we continued our journey downstream. With lush forests on either side of us, the sounds and smells of nature really took over the senses. We approach another stop on our journey, a dam stretching a third of the way across the river, a project that the nearby city of Prince Albert abandoned roughly 100 years ago. We decided to pull our boats on shore to have a closer look. A bit of a hill here, Ron. Okay. It's straight up. Stick in the sand, you'll be good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I think so. It would be easier if you break. backed yes. up a little, gave Very a little sandy. bit longer leash on Kendra there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. It's like a train of. You good? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. We're not right. off now. Oh, really? All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Stanley the goat. Okay, well, so I think this part here, this must oh. have been the, their uh, shipping lock on this side, is what the plan was for this little open spot here on the side, kind of rectangular. Just, and, just put a boat in. Well, so, you know, because when, when they dam the, the river, then you have to have some way for the, the river boats to be able to move up and down. And the time they built the dam, that was, that was one of their objectives was to to kind of flood these rapids upstream from here and make it a little easier to uh, to navigate. So if they just downed it off and didn't have a solution for the boats to get around, it would kind of defeat that purpose. So the wall is just a few feet in front of you. You want to step forward, there's just grass in front of you. You can reach out. And there so this is the wall of the dam, straight, see? Eh? definitely a big part of it. And it goes to your right, it goes... Oh, it angles up. Yeah. Up there. Yeah. And it's another probably two feet or so above where your hand was. And there's lots of graffiti on it too. Oh, oh yeah. Graffiti, yeah, painting, yeah. So. Everything's got cracks. Any good sayings, maybe we better not read it. <laughs> <laughs> and I could hear the wall, the standing yes. here. Yes. And uh, it's 
our voices and our bodies echo sound off of things in front of us. And if we're paying attention as blind people, we know that there's something there. And uh, uh, they used to call it facial vision, now they call it echolocation. Uh, what we do when we're walking sometimes as blind people, we go and we can hear the echo off of things around us. And we know, oh, there's something on my right or something on my left, there's something in front of me. And some people are so good at it. One guy, 14-year-old guy, could literally rollerblade down the sidewalk and with uh, just echolocation, he could tell, oh, there's a, a cement post or there's a plastic bin. He could literally tell wow. the difference between wow. cement and, and uh, plastic and steel. Could you tell how far away you were from the wall? I'm not a very good measurer. Okay. But I guess maybe right now I'd say three feet. But... Oh, not too far away from that. That's a pretty close marker, I'd say. Yeah, very neat. Well, should we let Ron get in? All right. Wow, that's still in pretty good shape considering that's what, 1912? Yeah, there's a bunch of cracks. If you reach up, you can see how it's curving. That wall you're against right now is going to angle 45 degrees to the rest of the walk. So, and then it turns the corner and then about 100 feet. We ventured off down a winding, narrow dirt path through dense bush to get to the other side of the dam. We passed by the other side of the shipping lock that John had mentioned. Even took some time to smell some local flora in the area. Once we got to the other side of the dam, I decided to share with everyone the significance of the historical chapter for the city of Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. In 1909, they come up with the idea and they built it in 1912, 1913. And then they were going to be building amusement parks here. This is going to be amazing. There was 300 people working here. They had buildings and hospital and they had all kinds of things here. And then they went through the math and found out the flow rate was nowhere near what they thought it was going to be. So the project at that point was stopped. And the bill was still there. PA paid for it until the middle 60s. So it almost bankrupted PA at one time. So it's kind of amazing that it's half built and it's still here. And uh, yeah, can you a picture amusement parks around here? <laughs> Not really. Or even 300 people working around here. It would have been quite the place. Before the trip, John did some research on the dam and found the history to be quite interesting. It's nice to, you know, think of the history in your, your head and what it would have been like, you know, back in 1912 when they were starting building that and, and the kind of technology they had then and to see uh, what they did accomplish. I mean, it's one thing with the hydropower calculations being off and, and uh, the money running out, but what they did build is still pretty impressive. As we paddled away, heading towards the forks of the river, a growing adversary started being much more apparent to us. The wind. Today, this afternoon, the wind was brutal. It was tough. We almost stopped in the rapids a couple of times because the, uh, the wind was coming exactly from the wrong direction, right in front of us. So it made it a little bit trickier in the, in the rapids with the wind kind of blowing you sideways. We had uh, definitely at least one spot where um, I had a bit of a marker on the, on the bank. There was a house building on the bank and I was looking at that building for quite some time um, till we were able to actually move past it. <laughs> so I was really disappointed when I looked up and I could still see was like still right beside it. So yeah, I had to dig in and find a little more juice to get by, and but we did. And uh, just kept on going to find some more wind to get stuck in. Blind Adventures with Ron Walsh. We'll be right back. Blind Adventures with Ron Walsh. Near the end of the day, as the sun continued to sink in the sky, we finally reached the Saskatchewan River Forks. We pulled our boats onto a nearby shore, and we decided to climb a hill towards a local lookout point. So how big is this hill? I don't know. I don't know. Big. Maybe 10 stories high or so? OK. Stories. About 500 yards. The path. Right. Cool. Deeper. So we're going up to do what? Well, look down on the confluence. Nice. So we're going to go, it's a little steeper here now. Big step up, a little bit to your left. There you mm -hmm. go. Okay, and try to be a little bit behind me. And a little steep section here. Okay, so we have a big tree root. Just uh, bend down for a minute and you can feel it. Good. 
-hmm. Big step up. A few tree roots here. I'm going to get you a little behind me now. It's important to be aware of possible obstacles and dangers, like dead trees, overhanging, broken branches. We're walking under uh, a widowmaker over here. <laughs> yeah, that oh. one's a bit of an issue. <laughs> a hanger? Don't, don't pull on it's the tree above your head. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to come up on a big stump that you got to step up on. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be able to feel the tree that's hanging. Oh, you If you reach up, just reach up with your hand. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, we've got a big tree rope in front of us, so big step up. Good. Mm -hmm. Little step up again. There. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of roots in a row. So here's the first one. All right. I was a young guy. And here's another one. We're in construction. I'm dragging my feet. Uh huh. Picking up extension cords. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you learn to lift your feet. Yeah, well, there you go. There it was. There's a big lookout up the top here. So I think we're going to finish climbing this big hill. The I think we're about halfway the, uh, now. Halfway? Wow. Yeah, this is a big, big hill. It's a big hill. By taking on challenges, you learn stuff that you thought you could never do, and you get skills, and it's what I need to look forward to. I don't like to be bored, and I'm continually kind of planning something next and doing something else, and I need excitement in my life. I can't just sit at home and be bored. We're in the woods. Looks like an old forest, some old birch, some big spruce. Like how big? Say 60, 70 feet. And... Wow, that's, that's getting up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this looks like somebody's put in some stepping logs here. I think I can see the top now. Oh? We're getting closer, much closer. All right, we're into the sand wow. now. So this is where it's going to be a steep climb and don't fall to the left. Okay. Coming towards the end of our journey, Stanley was definitely starting to feel the hardships of the trip. All, all sorts of thoughts, of course, run through my mind about things. And I'm thinking, why would they plan climbing a hill, a steep hill, right at the end of a trip? But, you know, you get that thought out of your mind and you say, all right, there's a hill here, I'm gonna climb it. And uh, so you go for it. And so we made it up and, and so it's good. It's good to be at the top. <laughs> okay, now we got a, a step in front of you that's that yeah, high. There you Ooh. go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wow. You made it. Nice. <laughs> we made it. Wow. <laughs> wow. We're at the top. <laughs> Our goal. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, cool. Wow. Cool. This is where we want it to come, and we are here. Stan's tired, so is everybody else. But this is something Stan will remember for a long time, so it's really cool that he was able at the last moment to come along, and I just phoned him up and he said, yes, uh, I might have to talk it over with my wife, and then immediately phoned me back, yes, I'm ready to go. And the excitement of going with somebody else that has never done it, and have them completely succeed, and not everybody gets out and does as many adventurous things as myself, and when I can bring somebody else out and they're totally successful, that's exciting. Yeah, we're at the at the parking lot now and we can see out over the where the river flowing down. So you're looking at the north now? Yeah, we're uh, kind of wow. looking at the well, we're looking at the Saskatchewan now. Yeah. The North Saskatchewan's to our left. Yeah. The Saskatchewan's to our right. Yeah. And we're kind of looking uh, straight at the the Saskatchewan here. And they wow. the river's kind of meet at a right angle, hey? And join up and then go down a bit and then make a curve to the right. Stan, what was the best part of the trip? The best and the worst part of the trip were the rapids. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Kendra, what do, you, what do you think? Oh, well, you know, I think the best part is just getting to paddle with new people, meet new people, and uh, it's, I'm always excited to see new people uh, get into the sport, so that's my favorite part. Well, there's one right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Doug? Well, my favorite part was because I've never been here before, and I don't live that far away in Saskatoon, so it was very nice to see the uh, the rivers meet. Yeah, it's kind of a historical place for sure. Yeah. Definitely. And John, how did you enjoy any part of the trip, John? Oh, I enjoyed it all. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a great trip. Uh, I mean, the river had gave us a little bit of adversity with the wind this afternoon, and uh, 
made things interesting, but if it all went totally smoothly, nobody would remember it. Right? <laughs> right. Gotta have something uh, a little bit more of a challenge sometimes. Now that we've got that kind of done, what's the next adventure? Waterfalls. Okay. <laughs> Skydiving on the waterfalls? <laughs> Host Ron Walsh, producers Anthony J. Chastego, Philip Dirksen, field producer Damian Kent, director Damian Kent, writer Jeff Martell, production manager and coordinator Jason Vaughn, supervising editor Anthony J. Chastego, director of photography, drone operator Sean Scott, camera operators Dustin Taylor, Damian Kent, production assistants locations Doug Hooper, Jeff Martell, location audio Tracy Westgard, picture editors Dustin Taylor, Sean Scott, motion graphics Shannon Scott, audio post-production, Glenn Enns, audio art. Craft Services, Catherine Breyer, Tavia Breyer, Care for Ron Walsh, Elaine Strymer, Integrated Described Video Specialist, Simone Cupid, Content Development Specialist, Jim Crisco, Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson, Director of Production, Karen Nye, Director of Programming, Brian Perdue, VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville, President and CEO, David Arrington, Copyright 2021, AMI, Accessible Media, Inc.